Hi, this is Dan. And Phil. When we aren't dropping intellectually sound and irreverent jokes, we also try to pay the bills with our numerous professional skills. Yes, Dan, we do indeed. If any of our listeners need any of the following services, they should email us at donate at twobroketwimbos.com. That's right. Maybe we should actually list some of those services. Mm, that sounds like a good idea. We have brand management, content marketing, event hosting, social media management, and influencer marketing. Yep. If anyone needs help with online marketing solutions, they should get hold of us. Let's give them that email again. That's donate at twobroketwimbos.com. Donate at twobroketwimbos.com. That is D-O-N-A-T-E at the number two broketwimbos.com. Or if you're not going to email us, you can go to twobroketwimbos.com forward slash contact for a full rundown of our services. Anyway, let's now get on to the story. Thanks for listening. We bro, we bro, we ain't got it. Bro, 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 five bro, we ain't got it. Don't spend no money, ain't got no clothes, ain't got no cars, ain't got no hoes. We bro, we bro, we bro. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now listening. One, two, bro, 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 bro. Microphone check, one, two, one, two. Oh, the level's looking good. I'm ready for this to go forward. Oh, snap. And plug this in. Right. Are those your bars? Are those your bars? Really? You embarrassing sack of potatoes. It's time for another episode. End of the month, new month, things. You know what we do. It's two broke twin balls. Then that guy in the building, aka Denias, aka the only guy, aka your girlfriend probably pities me, aka Dan Moore. And when you look inside my wallet or my body weight or whatever, man, it's Dan Less. Mm, were you triggered by that? I don't know. What's, what's, what's up with that, Dan? No, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm tired of speaking negative things into existence. Mm, that's right. That's right. You gotta be positive. Gotta be positive. You know what I'm saying. Yes, that's why we are saying two Twimbles who have paid off all loans and are upwardly mobile. That's the new name of the podcast. Get with the program, people. We're doing big things out here. And he's here with your boy, the one and only, the unmistakable, the irrefutable, the positive thinking. You know what I'm saying? The profiteering. Your boy, Phil Chad, aka Philly Floss, the big boss, baby. AKA Vita P. AKA Sexington Lovu. AKA DJ Karat. A.K.A. the former problematic Ponce A.K.A. Filthy Phil And of course, Shamwari Ditengero Dring And we're back again with another episode of Two Broke Twimbos We had booked a guest, you know, apparently, allegedly Some might say And we're at the studio and uh, I don't see him Dan, do you see him? I don't see him no one in the studio. No one in the studio. But that's okay because you know what I mean. Uh, we we did wanna we don't wanna switch it up. Have a couple of episodes where we are just sharing our gems of knowledge. Mm, and other times mm, also, you mm, know. Mm, mm. So maybe this is the universe telling us now what what the world needs right now. Mm. What Zimbabwe, Africa, the world, and really the whole universe read night right now. Mm. What they need is Dan and Phil. Dropping knowledge, dropping bombs on them. Mom's spaghetti. Um, I don't know. I I think bombs might be a trigger word, considering the current state of of affairs in the the global geopolitical sphere. You know the ge- it, No, it it won't really affect us. Not yet. Uh, you know, we are viable. Do you know? What? Basically, okay. I think the biggest the biggest tragedy that could happen to the West at this volatile time is if World War Three breaks out before House of Cards comes out, I'll be so pissed. Man, Westworld season two is supposed to come out like next year or something. Can we hold off just a little bit? I mean, guys, please. Black Panther hasn't dropped. Can the Black Panther movie come out first, fam? I, I already <sighs> know we're going to be disappointed by that movie. Ay. Because there's, we're, we're overhyped about it. Uh, but I don't know. Marvel haven't lost in quite a while. They when, when was Marvel's last loss in terms of movies? I think Marvel's last loss was Spider Man. Um, no, no, no. Um, are you talking about the most recent Spider Man? 
No, the one before the most recent. Yeah, the most recent one. Yeah, because they killed that Spider Man. Man, then they brought in the new Spider Man for Civil War. Some of the, some of those Iron Mans were. Uh, I think the second one, second or third one, one of those was like a dud. I'm trying to remember. I'd watch. I watched both of them. Yeah, Iron Man Two was a little iffy, but it wasn't that bad. No, it was Iron the... Man Two was with the hot people, huh? What was Iron Man? I'm trying to remember. What I remember, the first yeah, Iron with, with Man Viggo was Viggo Mortensen. Amazing. With Viggo Mortensen. Yeah. yeah, and the hot people. Yeah, that was, that was a bit iffy. But it wasn't oh, yes. a dud. Fantastic it Four. Wasn't... Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. I'd forgotten. Jeez. <laughs> e. Ooh, good that was Lord. so Lord, bad. Lord, Lord. Oh, that was terrible. Um, Yo, I haven't even watched it yet. I haven't even watched it. You haven't it. watched it? No, actually. Nah. Do you know, normally, normally I, I normally say, ah, oh, that movie sucked. Even though I, I enjoyed it. By that, I normally mean I just didn't enjoy it as much as I thought I would or I should have. But still, I had to watch it and, and there was a level of it. Fantastic Four was terrible. It was I just so heard. bad. I heard, man. Oh, That's why I avoided it like the plague. So bad. That is why I avoided it like the plague. Uh, one really bad movie that I watched recently was Terminator Genesis. I don't know why. I, I think it was just the itch because you guys need to understand the love that I have for Terminator. It's real. So I'd read all the reviews. I'd seen the complaints. And I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to... I just I just have to see it. I have to see it. It's like... I don't know. It's like maybe an open casket funeral. I don't know. <laughs> it just... Uh, anyway. Not to make light of death, but... De- dude. You... You don't... Have you watched it? Oh, no, I didn't. I have, I've had it for the longest time. <sighs> Every time I wanted to watch it, like the opening sequences Fair. were just so bad. I was like, I've watched something else. I go- <sighs> I got. I'm. I. I'm having so much problems articulating what, what how on, bad it what was. What Phil? Is there a girl fight happening at your house? Is it about to be a girl fight? No, that is that is my sister trying to sing. Mm. Should I have to shut up? Does can you? Because we we can mute her out later. Okay, I, I don't know. I don't know if we can, but okay. Well, then let, let me let me politely ask her to keep quiet. Hey, Chantel, shut up! <laughs> I think that worked. I don't think so. Anyway, uh, so Philip, the other day I was casually scrolling past my Facebook feed, um, clicking like on uh, on pretty pretty girls. Standard procedure. That's how we roll. I hadn't, I had, we hadn't roll. been on my Facebook in a long time. It was good to like catch up with familiar faces. Then I saw a post mm-hmm. that was under your name, but it couldn't have been you because Why? No, surely not. Let me let me let me bring it up actually. <laughs> this post was uh, directing your ire at mm. uh, a certain DJ Stavo. It wasn't even I. If you read the post, there's no ire. Oh, I'll, I'll read, read it out. Read it out. <laughs> read it out, and you right, see there's no ire. L- loading internet. Loading. I really mm-hmm. should have had this loaded up before because I knew I was going to ask you about it. Yeah, I think that's that's pretty much why we continue to struggle in life, Dan, because you're never prepared. I have it here. Hold on. There we go. Loading. Aha. Uh-huh. Feel Chad. Scroll down. Something about dildos and butt plug. There we go. Hmm. It seems Zim's favorite white DJ is buying views on YouTube, and I do hmm. not understand why. First why? of all, you said do not and not don't. That indicates ire. No, it indicates proper grammar. <laughs> you invest all the time and effort to create a good song and shoot See? a good compliment. video. Good and compliment. Then you get again. lazy on promotion. Mm. A video that is popular will not have 50,000 views on one day and then have virtually no views the next, only for it to get 60,000 more views on the following day. Trying to game the system doesn't work anymore in 2017. You will get caught. Mm. Nay, Philip. No caps, no exclamation points, no angry emoji. That was, that was a fair comment. I'm like, yo, fam. Why? Now, okay, I would like to say this. <clears throat> See, you're saying gaming the system doesn't work anymore. I'm not saying Stavo bought views. I am saying there's some suspicious looking activity. However, I'm saying he bought views because like, I know for a fact he bought views. <laughs> because of what he's doing, uh, someone actually posted this on your, on your page. Hey, the MTV base DJ takeover with DJ Stavo all weekend, Friday 2 p.m., Saturday 9 p.m., and Sunday 5 p.m. on MTV base. I don't know. That sounds like it's working out pretty well for him, man. Mm-hmm. Right. Sure. I'll carry on. I'm just... Do you know what? The concept of fake it till you make it is a real concept. That works in real life. 
Of course it does. But also, let's, let's, let's not gloss over the fact here. White privilege is a very real thing. Stavo 100%. Is, Stavo is a white man in a very black environment who speaks Shona, who interacts very well with black people. Should, so, he not, should he not use all the tools in his arsenal? I am not hating on my man for being a hustler. I am proud of my man for doing what he was able to do. Like, if that's what, what you are able to do, go great. What I'm saying is, based off everything you've just told me now, there's absolutely no need for you to buy YouTube views because you have your white skin working in your favor. Hey, man, listen, I'm not advocating for the buying of views I'm just saying sometimes you got to do what, whatever it is you got to do. Fair and fine. If you want to do whatever it is you got to do, then don't cry foul when you get caught. And I'm like, yo, fam, why are you doing this? You know what I mean? Don't be stupid. If, you, if you're paying someone to put, play your song on radio for payola and you blow up and then you get caught on, on some investigative journalist program for doing that act, don't cry like, oh, my God, I couldn't help it. This is what I had to do to survive. But okay. I'm, stand I'm, I'm, by. I'm not. I'm going to paint a, a hypothetical situation. All right. I don't Say, understand. Why are you trying to be the devil's advocate? Why? Are you just trying to annoy me? <laughs> when you know better, actually, you know better. I actually, just I actually no, I was, I was on radio and I spoke about it and everyone was like, Dan, you're such a hater. I'm like, what? No, I'm just kidding. That's my boy. But anyway, no. Um, <laughs> what did you say on radio? <laughs> no, we were playing his song. And then mm-hmm. I just like quickly said before the show, yo, man, this song has got over a million views on YouTube. We don't really know where they came from because I don't know where he got those views from. But anyway, this is that new song coming through. So afterwards, Munya was like, Dan, go, why did you say what you were saying earlier? I was like, nah, I was just pointing out that there seems to be a discrepancy between, you know, the, the actual uh, natural progression of a song and it's, and it's uh, you know, it's, uh, it's organic growth. And mm. the peaks that allowed it to reach its you no know, million views, and I'm saying I'm proud of him for getting to a million views. But you know, oh, is it two million now? Oh no, one million, two oh. eight million. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So oh. anyway, listen to this hypothetical situation. Mm, so Dan and Lord. Phil start uh, start putting up uh, video content on YouTube. Mm-hmm. All right, their goal is to grow two broke twimbos, and their mm-hmm. goal at the same time is to to get sponsorship and to to make money out of it and to reach as many people as possible, man. Our brand of comedy needs to be seen and heard by the masses. Mm. Then eh, we post up a video. We think it's brilliant, man. We put a lot of work into putting it together, man. We had to learn how to video edit. We had to get some professionals to work on it. And, man, we had to take several takes and blah, 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 and it's done. And we put it up. Here's this nice five-minute skit put put together and brought to you by the Two Broke Twimbos. Ah, one week down the line, 48 views. Yay. All right, no cool. We got to market our product better. So we go on Facebook. We go on Twitter. We, we, actually, we actually promote some of our posts on Twitter and Facebook. And we, 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 we holler at all the influencers we know. And we get some social media buzz going about it. Heck, we even buy a little ad in the newspaper that just says two mm. broke twimbos with the little cut joke and, the, and, the, and the, you know, just the logo and our website. I'm like, mm. boom, man, we've done some promotion work. That's Next right. week to, to check out my views, 234. Hey, hey. what's that? Hey. 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 So, is this we hit up kind of program manager with Comedy Central. Like, listen, we would like to feature in some of your programming. This is our stuff. And then he looks at it, then he's like, you know what? This is actually pretty good. But we're only looking for people with a following. I've just looked at your YouTube views. You've got 283 views on your, on your video. Mm. I'm just saying that, that that's not good enough. Mm-hmm. We've been told that our content mm. is good. Mm. But problem is, Zimbabwe, you know, they, just, they don't see us as being relevant to their plans. We've got to get them involved somehow. Mm-hmm. In, in, in without telling Phil, I hit up my boy... Um, Black Jesus, right? That Black Jesus <laughs> wang in Zoma did that book. Eh, I want Black oh. Jesus. I know she's not gonna fourth. Okay. I know she's not gonna wander, but I know she's gonna go. He's got an unlimited internet connection, so I don't know if he's dreaming about internet. No more Black Jesus. We didn't Black Jesus, yeah. In in the wire, 
I need my video to get to 100,000 views. Like Jesus, I know, I know, for now, Dad, make it 120, I'll give you 100,000 views. Mm. And when I go borrow 20 bucks, come back to Black Jesus, I'm like, Black Jesus, <laughs> here's $120. Black Jesus, so got any team, yake, over no six. On my computer's 20, Dad. Mm. What are $120, yacho, yo, yo, over one, we say 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Right, from now until tomorrow, we're going to be re watching this five minute video. <laughs> until it reaches 100 and something views, manzo. Mm. Bo, bo gara vese, waita reloop, replay, 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 replay next day. Waro waka na ma, ma, ma dragon 3 kuti wa sarare. Then they come and they're like, Dan, taita basa rako. Actually, chiti pa imwe five dollars because chi, we had to spend money on my dragons. I'm like, you know what, guys? I just I just opened my YouTube. It's sitting on 100,000 atoms. It's now trending in Zimbabwe and it's now reaching 120,000 views. Here's your extra five bucks. Now mm. I go back to Comedy Central and I'm like, listen, guys, that content that you liked but you didn't want to get behind because you felt like it didn't have too much following, look, mm. it's got 120,000 views. It's now trending number one in Zimbabwe. These guys are like, story. damn, Jeez. damn, damn, two broke twimbles. Dimne, yes, 100 something thousand views. Last person to, writ to hit that was Amara Brown with her video. You know what? Here's your brand spanking new contract. Mm. Next thing you know, two broke twimbles are driving uh, Aventadors down the down the pothole streets of Harare. Mm, from Comedy Central money. From Comedy Central money. <laughs> so, this story, right, did not feel what like my views, right? Mm -hmm. Did they necessarily do anything wrong? Yes. Tell me why. You lied to the programming manager about your popularity. That's deception, right? There and there, you lied. Could, I didn't lie. I because said my, my view has 120,000. My video has 120,000 views. Gamed, you gamed the criteria that they use in order to seem more desirable. That is lying. If a girl posted a photo <laughs> of herself to make herself look more attractive, you would scream, blow the motor, because that is That's deception. different. Dude, it's, That's different. No, if it's a girl... It's no, it's different, because the content doesn't change. What it changes is... is the, the disadvantage that I have being Zimbabwean, I'm trying to overcome that. And yes, I'm using backdoor methods to do that and probably not very uh, ethical. But unfortunately, it's not my fault that you guys have a, an inbuilt discrimination against Zimbabweans because you believe Zimbabwe is not on your radar, it's not on your map, even though the content is good. So it would be like a girl who knows she's hot. But ain't no one looking at her because she knows she's only got kind of 50 followers on Instagram. So ain't no one following her. So what she does is yeah. she doctors the number you're, so that you notice her. And then you meet her and you're like, damn, she's actually hot. And then afterwards, she's like, you know what? That I was actually lying about my numbers. So imagine to sign a contract to Comedy Central. We do two seasons. They are wildly successful. And then we're like, yo, by the way, you know when you first gave us this contract? This is how we got those views that made you sign us. The program manager will be like, ha ha, damn, you guys, you really played me, eh? Anyway, here's your third season. Uh, you guys want private jets with that contract or, you know what I mean? So I'm just playing devil's advocate. I'm just saying perhaps uh, bad DJ Starvo knew there's no argument. that because MTV Base and Trace no, it doesn't. focus on... No, they don't. They stopped, they stopped using their policy when they started MTV. Trace Africa changed everything. I'm using a, I'm using so, a, a, a hypothetical example. Yeah, it's a bad hypothetical because it doesn't apply. It just doesn't apply anymore. Plus, let's be honest here. Okay, Stavo, the long-term goal for all this is you want to be put on TV and then those TV um, appearances will translate to bookings for DJ gigs. All I'm saying is, do you want people's first impression of Zimbabwean DJs to be Stavo set? <laughs> A. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Let's move you on. You see why I'm saying you're a hater? Anyway, I would love to know. I'm not Listen, a hater. Oh, <laughs> to be 100% honest, I agree with you. It's not very ethical what he did. But I've just painted this scenario. And I think anyone who was trying to get to where they're going to get, and they knew that if this is what is needed for me to do to get, to get what I'm trying to get to, and I know that the product I'm bringing you is solid, it's different from just, yo, I just want to show off to my peeps. Look at this. But you know what my, my argument to that will be, right? Yeah. Uh, my argument to that will be, okay, fair and fine. My homie went and did a song with Uhuru. Did a song, did a video 
with pilot films. And it's a pretty dope pretty song. Decent video. It's a dope video. Pretty yeah. decent song. Pretty decent song. Pretty decent video. My homie there went and got Ja Praise. Ja Praise is peak. Went to Durban. Rented out some expensive ass cars. Shot a video. Very nice looking video. Uh, so all this requires heavy investment. Yeah. Off bat for those two videos alone, just ballpark figure. I'm I'm assume I can assume minimum he spent was twenty thousand dollars for everything involved. Right. You spent twenty grand to produce the product and you failed to market it. Just based off that alone, you could have pushed it. Amara Brown. Now, let's put it let's put aside the fact that she's Andy Brown's daughter. Amara Brown really only has two singles to a name before Mukoko drops out. You know what I mean? But they know how to game the system. They know how to promote it. They push it. Mukoko gets a million views. I also, like, when I came across the Star Wars thing, I was like, okay, wait a minute. Now, if Star Wars is doing this, is everyone else doing it? In, in, so in, I went just, I, just in context, Mukoko gained a million views after, was it eight months? Eight months yes. or ten months, but, something like that. That is the but that is the natural progression. Yeah. That is like with Star Wars views, the one he did with Japraza, what is it in Goma? He, it's literally five hundred thousand views in two weeks and then it falls off a cliff. Come on, man. Anyway. Um I'm not saying I know the answers. I'm not saying he did buy the views. It does look oh, He suspicious. bought the views. Dude, he bought the views. Stop, stop trying to play. Dude, maybe, I know what it looks like. Maybe his marketing strategy was such that there would be peaks of views because he, mm-hmm. I don't know, maybe. Okay, let me, let me, let me give you an example. Dude, okay. there's no argument, please. You're wasting my time. No, listen. If, no if, if, I were to, if I were to pay for Facebook promotion and Twitter promotion yeah. for two days. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I pay through the nose so that this video shows on everybody's Facebook page in Africa. And mm-hmm. that's going to cost me $1,000. Okay. okay. For two days. Right. right? Now, mm-hmm. everyone sees this. They click on it. They watch the video. Meh. Eh, some people like it. Some people don't. Whatever. But they all watch that video over that time period that this video is being promoted. And then, Maria Pera, I'm done with the promotion. It's now back to normal. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't there be peaks and valleys in your viewership? Nope. I'm just saying. Nope. Dude, I do this for a living. I know what it looks like. It does not happen like that. Right. When you pay for promotion, you, you are dealing with two parallel skills. You have the promoted skill and the organic skill. What happens, though, is after you, you've paid for, let's say you've paid for a tweet. Guys, check out my new video. And let's, let's, let's even say, like, at a certain level, like, once you cross the threshold of trying to reach more than 500 people, if your signals aren't on point, if you don't have a, a strong mailing list, if you don't have your reference links dialed in to know exactly who you're trying to reach, you're literally throwing money up against the wall. But that's besides the point. So let's say he does that and he spends a massive amount of money and he gets 6,000 people to click on the video. What will then happen is this. Because you've now got 6, 60,000 people clicking on the link in one day, YouTube will register that and say this video is now popular. It's getting organic views. Therefore, it's going to shoot to the top of the trending page. What that then does is... To be is honest, put, Simu, wait, Simu Zangoma on. was trending for a long time. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. It's going to shoot that up to the top of the trending page. One. What is what that then is going to do is going to tell YouTube, oh, this video is popular amongst these people. The people that like A are going to like B. So it's going to keep suggesting it to them through for the next couple of days because that is now established itself as a legitimate link. So on top of it trending and being at the top of the trend, it's going to be the top of referrals. That's one thing. So if even if you paid for advertising on Monday, on Tuesday, if your advertising has run out, you're still going to be getting referral links from YouTube. One. Two, if you've got paid advertising on Twitter... That is going to translate into organic clicks as well because people are going to be clicking on it. People are going to be uh, retweeting it. People are going to come back and say, yo, I saw this video. It's dope. That is then going to translate to organic plays as well. So even if your advertising stops on Tuesday, if advertising was so effective that it got you 60,000 people to watch in one day, which if that is the case, bravo, my man, your, your media skills are amazing. 
what will then what will that equal equate to is referral links so it won't spike it'll be a progression curve it'll peak and then it'll dip slowly here's, and it'll continue a, to drop down tell me if this couldn't possibly happen paid for advertising gets you 60,000 views youtube is still following this trend so the next day, before it goes straight, for example, I'll notice um, uh, when Amara Brown dropped uh, What You Want as a video. Okay, I watched it grow in the first day, several thousand views. The next day, it was, I think it was like 20, 30,000 views or something. And it was only the next, it was like two days after she dropped it that it was on trending. Now, could this not be a potential scenario that could happen? Paid for views, get you 60,000 views. Okay, bam. Now YouTube is still collating this data and referencing everything and so on. So it's not yet it's not yet being referred and it would only the next day that's when referrals start happening and that's how you see a fifty thousand spike now. Is that not possible? No. I'm not saying that's what happened, I'm just saying that could possibly have I paid for views today I dropped my video. No tomorrow I pay for views. Okay, another paid for views getting <clears throat> Right. Yeah. Another thing. There's a service called Buzzsumo. Go to Buzzsumo. Mm. Copy and paste the title of DJ Stavo's video, put it in there. It'll show you what they call referral and organic links. Mm -hmm. Then go and get another video. Let's say Mukoko, for example. Compare and contrast. It's night and day, fam. It's night and day. Dude, there's no argument. There's no argument here. Like, you know this, Dan. I don't know what you're trying to argue no. for. Do you, know, do you know what the biggest smoking gun of this whole thing was? Mm. So... Stavo has his little, I don't want to be disparaging, but his, um, his this graphic graphic designer slash his uh, uh, PA, I'm sure he's doing his media, whatever it may be, um, Hastings. Yeah. I know Hastings because he was at AU. I don't find uncle. So Hastings was in the comments trying to be passive aggressive. I'm like, and he was just going on and on like, no, Phil, you're being a hater. This is a personal attack. I'm like, dude, this is not a personal attack. Numbers never lie. I have presented numbers to prove my case. If you want to argue your case prove numbers so what you need to do is go to the you if you really want to continue this argument go to the youtube page because you have access to the youtube page i know you do go to the analytics and show me the referral report if you show me a referral report that says that all these inbound links came from google facebook twitter whatever it is what have you i'll be like my bad i'm sorry i was wrong clearly i am not as good as this digital marketing thing as I thought I was. They never produced those. Smoking gun number two is the moment my Facebook post went up, they disabled statistics on the YouTube videos. Okay, Phil, as someone who's worked in PR, when someone attacks your brand on social media, okay, there's several responses that you can have. What, what would you recommend as, as a, an entertainment brand, someone comes and attacks your brand on social media? There are two options. That if Stavo really was um, a victim of an unprecedented and uh, uh, hurtful attack by myself upon his person, he has two options. Either ignore it completely and go about his day and do nothing about it, or produce the numbers and say, this dude is lying, he's full of, he's full of garbage. Right. So, Phil, you're advising someone, you're advising an entertainment entity who have someone post on their personal Facebook page that they believe whatever, whatever, and they attack your brand. You're now advising this entity what they should do. Should they respond or they shouldn't they? That's what I'm saying. There are two options. If you're going to respond, you don't respond. No, with I'm conjecture. saying would you, would you advise them to respond or not? In this instance, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have responded if it was a lie. If it was a lie, why would you respond? Dude, I'm posting this on my personal page. I didn't post it on my blog. I didn't post it on Two Broke Trimbos. I posted exactly. it on my private Facebook page. So why would it ruffle your feathers so much? Exactly. And the funny so, thing so don't respond. So is it not possible that Hastings got on and responded and the team was like, yo, what are you doing? You know our policy. We don't respond when people hate on our brand. No, He's because like, oh, the, the next day, the next day, Star was liking all my posts and then he unliked them an hour later. And then he did a whole Facebook Live video about my post. So once again, your argument has fallen apart.
again, perhaps the next day, his... I'm not making an argument. I'm just trying to say... What I'm trying to say to you, Phil, is that there's so many possibilities of what might have happened. The most feasible, by far, is that he bought views. But it's, it's by no means conclusive because you don't have the raw data in front of you. However, even if he did buy views... You don't know the full story behind it as to what was, what was it that he bought views for. Perhaps he had a particular deal that he had to land that was very dependent on views, regardless of where they came from. You don't know that. That doesn't and make I'm a difference to the fact that, that he bought very, views. Yes, that it doesn't. doesn't. Make a difference it, I'm not, I'm, no, I'm not, saying, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have spoken about it or whatever, whether he bought it. I'm just saying it's very possible that you, at one time in the future, may possibly find yourself doing the exact same thing. No, I'm sorry, Phil. If you and I are depending, we will get a Comedy Central contract based on how many views you have, regardless of where they come from or regardless of whatever. Maybe someone just needs to justify that this is our policy here. If someone's gone this item and they need to have a certain number of views, or whatever the case is, we don't know. I'm just saying anything is possible, Phil. Anything's possible. No, it's not. Dude, I manage, <laughs> I manage artists. I'm, I've got into arguments with my artists because the problem being is that this is not unique. This is the culture of a lot of, not even just in Zimbabwe, but African artists. They like to inflate. I, the weird thing is after the, this whole fiasco, I then did a post and I said, like, this isn't the only time it's happened. And I brought up a whole list of instances where artists either buy followers or they get bots to retweet them. So it looks like they're trending and looks like they're popular or they copy someone's work. It's, it's a, it's a serious problem that we have in this, cult, in this culture that we, we need to weed out. And as I said, I work with artists. Artists have approached me and said, yo, what if we do A, B, C, D, E? What if we buy this? What if we do that? And I've, and I've told them no. And I've refused to be a part of that because I do not want my name to be involved with nonsense. There are ways to do You can do this the right way. It's easy. There are ways to game the system the right way this is this is deception this is straight up lies all right we hear you Mm. we hear you and don't get me wrong i was paying you no i'm just i'm just playing as the i was i was you on radio i'm just playing the other side so that uh we can we can play out this whole conversation um i would not advocate buying of views in any situation because generally it can come back to bite you but at the same time, I also realize that I don't know all the details, so I'm happy to leave it at that. Um, I never, but that's the thing. Like, I never, I never assumed the details. I just said, "Yo, fam, these are the numbers. This is the evidence in front of me. This dude is buying views. I can tell he's buying views. It's clear as day he's buying views. Why okay. are you buying views? Because, like I said, if if Stavo really, 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 dude, give me a thousand dollars when you release a song, and watch what I can do with that money. Simple." You won't get a million views in two weeks, I can tell you that. Yeah, because he's not at the level of getting a million views in two weeks. Okay, to be, okay also to be fair, it wasn't two weeks. It was a couple of months. Yeah, but yeah, I do, yeah. You actually have a point because let me in fact let me let me bring up the graph. So so <laughs> we can do the play. <laughs> hey, I, I can't believe we spent thirty <laughs> minutes discussing. But anyway, it's it's a very valid point. Okay. Um, if yeah. you're a little bit confused by this conversation, uh, that's okay. We, we, we just analyze a lot of the trends in Zimbabwean music. And, uh, yeah, it looks, uh, you know, mm. Stavo, Stavo mm. is doing very well right now. He's on a high because sure. he's got several songs on rotation on the radio stations across the country. And he's also featuring a lot on MTV Bass and Trace. So he's doing well. And when you're doing well, people start analyzing what you're doing. So no, that's it's not really about me, dude. Like, dude. No, no. I literally, mean, w- even we we will as because obviously, if you're doing well, we're gonna like, oh, okay, dope. So, oh, snap, you got a million views. How did you do that? Damn, that's oh, wait, mm. wait. You exactly. know what I mean? That's obviously exactly. Because as we can see, the the video dropped here, um, in early November. This is for the song with the Uru, sexy darling. So it kicks off at about a a thousand views. Then it the next day drops down. It gets maybe about eight hundred views. Then the next day it picks up a little bit to about three thousand. Then on the fourth day it goes from four thousand views to seventy two thousand views. Very nice, very nice. Next day drops back down to about twenty thousand views. So this is what I'm talking about here. That drop down from seventy two thousand to 24,000 depending on how those views were attained 
that 24,000 could be a result of the momentum gathered by the views. All right. Then it shoots back up to about 30,000, drops back down to 20,000, plateaus at around 24,000 for two days, then drops all the way to zero views for three days. So within three days, it was getting no views at all. Then after three days with no views, it shoots all the way back up to 40,000 views. Next day, shoots up again to about 45,000 views. The next day, drops back down to zero views for another two days. Two days, zero views. Then it shoots back up again the next day to 48,000 views. The next day, drops back down to zero views. The day after that, it spikes a little, about maybe 3,000 views. Then it drops back down to zero views. And I'm not exaggerating. It literally, like, the graph is at the baseline. It is sitting on the x-axis. Um, then shoots back up. The interesting thing for me is 1 million views and combined likes and dislikes of about 4,600. Which is kind of weird. Do you know... The biggest, the biggest thing that you see, you got a million views, right? Shares, 134. That's a red flag. You t- so basically what that means is a million people came to watch your view, but 0.01% of those million people liked it enough to say, by the way, watch this. Interesting. I could, I could dissect these numbers all day, every day. Oh, and and, and, do, and you will. I'm not. I've, I was done with this issue. I'd moved <laughs> on with my life. You don't put it up. <laughs> I, I really well, don't want to. I, be, like, <laughs> I honestly have nothing against stuff. Like, I've met him a couple of times. He's a nice guy. I just we should have him on the show views? sometime. Actually, I was actually going to suggest we should, and uh, then we, we can address before, be, head before, on. He, before he hears this uh, interview. Actually. Would probably be best. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, he'll obviously have you first of all to address these kind of situations. But also, aside from that, he he will have a lot of insights that because uh, the truth of the matter, mm. we yeah we can talk white privilege, but there's still a lot of white artists I know who still haven't broken the markets that he's done. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, he's I mean you know he's managed to uh, to break into certain markets. So it'd be interesting to hear how he's done it. Mm-hmm. Um, Anyway, I'll see if he's available. He likes me. I don't know. I'll, I won't tell him that you'll be in the interview. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, oh, I think he still likes me. I, I don't know. I haven't seen him in a while. But anyway. <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right, cool. Anyway, uh, we can move on from that. Uh, conclusion here is, uh, you know, shout out to DJ Stavo doing big things, but uh, we don't understand what you're doing. He's got 2,019 subscribers. Another weird thing for someone who has a million views. Let me see how many Amara No, that, that's that's understand that's understandable because like if you got a viral song that blows up, people will just land to see the song. They won't really come to see the video. He's Subscriptions got, he's are got, built over consistent. Yeah, he's got two songs over 500,000 views. Mm-hmm. That's that's less than Amara Brown, and Amara Brown has 9,000 subscriptions. Mm-hmm. Hey. I love how you just flip flip sides on that dude. Like I thought you were on his side. Like, first of all, I wasn't on his side. I was simply trying to explain possible explanations, some of which may be feasible, some of which probably not. But I, you know, I was just trying to. That's man. That's how you foster conversation, man. Otherwise, you wouldn't have said all those things you said. A brilliant devil's mm-hmm. advocate. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think we can we can safely move on. To other things, mm-hmm. um, put this issue to bed. Ja Praiser. Mm. he's uh, he's done very very interesting things, really. So, mm. Ja Praiser recently announced this week, in fact, or last week, rather, he announced that he's launching a new record label called the Military Touch Movement, and mm-hmm. he immediately announced the signing of I think it was five artists, including Andy Murizzo. Nati O, mm. and, and basically all of Kanako's roster. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so you're only talking about Who's two people. On Kinako, you're man. talking two people on Kanako's roster. So Andy Murizzo, no, Nati O. Yeah. Do you know what I've noticed? I've noticed in Zim, mm. artists seem to be signed, or well, signed is a strong word, affiliated with multiple labels or camps. For example, um, Jemima. I'm trying to think of one of these artists I spoke to recently with Kenako. Was it... Um... Okay, I can't remember. Let me use another example. For example, uh, uh, Soul Africa. 
mm-hmm. Soul Africa were affiliated with Kenako. In fact, they were signed to Kenako. At the same time, they were... Uh, do you remember when we spoke to... I think we spoke to Takora. And we mm-hmm. asked him... He was, like, he was very engaged. That was a great conversation. <laughs> we asked him, like, what was, what was the arrangement? Were you, was, did Kenako handle all your distribution, whatever? And he was like, no, we were signed to Kenako, but it was kind of a, a, a loose arrangement where... We were gonna we were gonna release an album under Kenako, but we were also working on our own things. Do you, do you remember when he said something along those lines? Mm-hmm. I get the feeling that that's what Kenako is. We we still need to obviously just get with them and and get full details because not a single artist from Kenako has been able to give me in detail what their contracts entailed, mm. which makes you question it. Anyway, so I don't know. We'll have to find out. So Ja Praiser signs uh, Andy Murizo, who's uh, a lot of people felt were. Uh, it was his rival. I don't know. Uh, XQ, Nati O, and uh, a girl and a guy who's who are up and coming, basically. Wow. Oh, I, I have their name somewhere. Ugh, fine. In journalism. Journalism. It is highest right here. <laughs> Ugh. Um, let me see. And they've also released a song. Um, yeah, anyway. I heard the anthem. I thought it, I thought it could be kind of catchy. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the the girl's name is Tashle, and they signed uh, mm-hmm. Daniel Chiweda and DJ Tamuka. Exactly, Tamuka was also on Kenako. Kenako, yeah. yeah. So, in fact, he was the sole remaining producer after Oskid left. But mm-hmm. anyway, um, so if you make bits, now's the time to heat up Kenako music. If you make birds, man. If you make birds. And no, I'll be no, honest, no, I, saw, I saw Tamuka a couple of times earlier and he seemed to indicate that he was about to move somewhere, but whatever. Yeah, so, he's been saying that for a while, actually. <laughs> he's been saying that for a while. <laughs> this is funny to me because uh, I don't know how well you know Andy Murizo. Um, of he, a big fan, big fan. <laughs> he's one of those artists that sort of just... Sim- a, a story similar to Ja Praiser, to be honest. He, in a very short space of time, just garnered popularity real quick among the masses. Uh, with a mm-hmm. couple, actually, with only a couple of songs, he's got a, a couple of songs out: uh, "Derira," which is his, probably his most popular one; "Chidaf Dunda," a couple other songs. Uh, and they sound the the style and the the style of music is very similar to Ja Praiser. So obviously, immediately people started comparing them, and there were a few words exchanged in public between Ja Praiser and Andy Murizo where one was saying basically, ah, he's old news, I'm new school, or whatever, and the other was saying, Psh, nah, fam, who's this little kid, or whatever. Um, hmm. So I thought this is a masterstroke for Ja Praiser because in one fell stroke, he's taken away what people perceived to be his biggest potential rival to is now in his side, <laughs> in his camp. Hmm. And um, this is probably also good for Andy Murizo because now he's got... A, a machine that's already in place to push his music, assuming that uh, it's all good intentions and, and good faith coming through from Ja Praiser's camp. Um, XQ, I'm <sighs> XQ is more established in terms of time than Ja Praiser. XQ's been making hits for longer than Ja Praiser. He's not a bigger artist at the moment, but he does have. Uh, 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 a catalog behind him. It, this reminds me of the time that Jay Z signed Nas. Totally different situation. <laughs> Very different situation. The circumstances were different, but I remember the questions that went in my head, which were thinking like, "Okay, Jay Z's got the business on lock right now, but Nas, man, you got this. You, you know, you got this. Uh, you're coming from a, a supposed beef." Or not suppose it an actual beef, and you're you've you've got this whole catalog behind you, but then you're signing to your perceived rival. A bit different, That's but I I so totally different. No, it's not even. But it's totally different. One, Nas was, Nas was a free agent. He had left. He had left Atlantic, and he needed uh, to sign a contract. The only people that were willing to pay him. What he was asking for were Def Jam and Interscope. Def Jam had the better deal on offer. So he was signing to Def Jam. He's just at the head of Def Jam 
happened to be Jay-Z. So if I'm Nas, I'm like, okay, do I really want to hold a grudge? And let's not forget, Nas won. He so won. Not the, uh, like academically, yeah. But I mean, if you look at the whole timeline up to today, who really won? You know what I mean? If you if you if you look at the story, and that's hard for me to of, say because there's a lot of ar- I dude, stand there's a lot of for argument. Nas Steve Stout, Steve Stout, who was used to be Nas's manager, used to work very closely with Nas, and Steve Stout was the one that started pushing Nas in this commercial direction. If you remember Nostradamus, if you remember the, around the time of Hate Me Now, and mm. he had all these deals popping off, and Nas literally was like, "Nope." I don't want this. And Nas went and locked himself in his house for two years because he didn't want that level of fame. He wasn't ready for that level of fame. Steve Stout, they went across the road and started working with Jay-Z. And all the early moves that Jay-Z started putting together commercially were a direct result of the stuff he was doing with Steve Stout. Do you remember remember the backlash at the time? Like public... uh, uh, how everyone was just like so disappointed in Nas and like how could you do that and blah 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 yeah, do you remember people that people are stupid yeah people are stupid and I guess Dude, it's all from perception Nas's point of but view. anyway you tell me do you think this is a good move for XQ <laughs> uh, yeah pretty much XQ just came from releasing a wildly successful album do you know what you gotta look at is this way right if I'm XQ from a business standpoint if I'm XQ and I've just dropped a song. Bachura is is getting me massive plays, right? The biggest problem an artist has in this modern day, uh, day and age is having the funding to put a project together and the funding to distribute that project. And then also hiring a team who can do that for him and get bookings and so forth. So now if you sign to a situation, obviously we don't know what the deal is, but if XQ is now in a situation where all he has to do is worry about making music, and everything else is being handled by Ja. And whatever he's giving up in terms of um, percentages and whatever it may be is not an absurd figure that is going to affect him in that way. Why wouldn't I? Why would I? Some artists... In, in and, all dude, honesty, you know this. In, uh, yeah, like yeah. You know this. Some artists aren't billed to be administrators of their works. Some artists just want to be artists. And they want to make sure that someone else handles everything else behind the scenes for them. So that they can focus on making art. If he can that find most someone... Most artists should do that. Yeah. If he can find someone who's willing to do that for him, and it's less headaches for him, and he can just focus on performing and releasing songs, hell yeah! That's a great move. Um, although at the same time, 2017, XQ should have his own record label, man. Dude, like I said, some artists aren't built that way. Some artists aren't looking. Some artists aren't thinking like that. Everyone can't follow a, a, a set path. If XQ, and granted, we, we can definitely point out a few of, a few missteps that XQ has made in his career. But if XQ has no ambition to manage artists and look after artists, then go for, go for it, man. Do whatever it is that allows you to be the best artist you can be. And... I'm certainly not convinced that artists make good label heads. I actually had a post on this um, the day yeah. um, MTM um, signed. And it is, dude, there's a long list, a very, very long list of labels that are floundering or have floundered because they have an artist at the head. And at the end of the day, artists are very egotistical. Now, okay. oh. <laughs> hey, dude, sorry, it's just dust. Cash, yeah. uh. cash time has collapsed. Oh my God! I, <laughs> now it looks like Ma'i has left. I've heard rumors that DJ VG is also leaving. He's gonna start focusing on doing um his own thing. So literally, cash time is now down to one. Yeah, that's that's terrible. Anyway, um, the reason why I don't know if it's a good move for him is because uh, Ja Preza has shown his acumen at at uh, spreading his name based on on, on live performances. Radio followed Ja Preza's success on tours and at shows, and you know what I mean? Like, he didn't didn't break out on radio. XQ, on the other hand, is is heavily dependent on radio, and I'm not sure if Ja Preza has the answers for XQ's career path. But anyway, 
We can see. But I don't. I'm, again, I'm, to be honest, I'm not sure. I, I I don't think. I don't know if it's a good or bad idea. I was actually talking about it with PD the other day, and I had no views, and PD had strong views that he thought it was a bad idea, and um, I was just thinking about it. But if you think about it, especially in Zim, the Zimbabwean radio market is so small. An artist can literally do radio runs by themselves, and they could do a full radio run in yeah. a in a in one working week, easily. Mm-hmm. You literally only need to know what, Z? Yeah, yeah. at most six pro program managers, six playlist yeah. managers from, from each station, and that and you can maintain those relationships. Dude, like Zim is such an easy market to handle. This like if all he has to do is do radio, and all that means is printing CDs and coming to ZFM and saying, "Shout guys, this is my new CD," and just chilling in the lobby, saying hobnobbing with guys. Oh, by the way, I'm having a concert. Here's some tickets. Blah blah blah. That's all he has to do. Come on. I think at this stage, XQ has been making music for 15 years now, if not mm. more. He should understand that at least. Why well, he seems to be doing well on radio. He had how many? He had uh, the song with Rocky, that Alleluia song, which blew up on radio. Uh, mm. Then he had, obviously, he's got the song with Amara Brown, Bachura. He had um, the song with Nati O, which did relatively well. Uh, called Bella, I think, relatively well. It wasn't like a hit like the others. He had the song with Calvin. Zungunda Menya. Zungunda Menya. That one did pretty well as well. Uh, like, and he's just come from releasing this album. He's got a little bit of buzz going. I was surprised to see. Uh, to, I thought he'd be booked a bit more and whatever, but I don't know. Anyway, that should be interesting. But. Focusing on Andy Murizo, which is, which is who everyone's talking about. I, I also found it quite funny that all the news headlines were Andy Murizo signs to Jar Prazer when there was all these four or five artists. <laughs> um, he saw he was in the news. But now, but now there's a new headline. <laughs> Fam, Aish, these WhatsApp groups, I need to exit them. Because ah, the memes I was seeing today. Ah. <laughs> Guy. <laughs> <laughs> and granted they were in very poor taste and they were very demeaning to women but they were basically implying that Andy's biggest competition now is uh, a beer bottle oh wow that's that's uh, yeah. that's wow yeah. nice yeah. anyway um, classy if classy. you if you don't know what happened it was in the news that uh, Andy Morizzo, uh was accused shall we say by uh, s- exotic dancer, stripper, and uh, all-around Zimbabwean bed girl, Bev uh, Sibanda. And she says, look, I'm pregnant, and the father of this child is Andrew Murizo. Now, I was under the impression that Bev was married, but maybe I was wrong. I don't know. Mm, um, I thought she was, she, was, she was married to Dobber Don. What? No. No, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> it was like a... It was like a, a it's like a, like a normal dude, and it, there was a, a point of conversation at some point, like, is he cool with the fact that, you know, she's, uh, she's out here in these right, streets? She's, she's, paying, she's paying the bills. She's paying the bills, fam. Uh, I'll be, girl, you do your It's thing. like that Usher song. 5 a.m. <laughs> 5 p.m. I'll be there. I'll be ironing her clothes. Baby, you know, like, you want to try these out? Do your you thing, girl. Oh, sh- show me your routine. Let's see if we can work on it. And, and you know, <laughs> mm, you know, there, I, I think we need to work it because it was pop, pop, kick. I think we should go kick, pop, pop. You know what I mean, babe? Just to mix it up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so obviously, my speculation is get someone in the news, hype up things. Because Ja Prazer released a song to announce, obviously, these, these new acts. It's uh, Ja Prazer featuring Andy Murizo, XQ, Nati O. Um, mm. uh, um uh, what's her name? Tale. Mm-hmm. Really should learn her name. That, that is it. Ta- Tashle. You really should. Tashle. Yeah. So it's not like you, your job relies on you knowing artist names yeah. or anything. Oh yeah, we got this. Song. I have to make sure that uh, it, it plays in the brand new segments. Anyway, um. Well, so I don't know. Let's see how that one plays out. Uh, by the way, if you want to hear the Ja Praiser episode and hear a little bit more about uh, his beginnings and, and how he moved along with myself uh, struggling to keep up with the com- conversation, you can scroll up. Uh, Shonglish was a problem, ne? Hey, Shonglish is a problem. I thought I did pretty well, actually. I was quite proud of myself. And, uh, and, and ever, ever since then, I don't call him Ja Praiser, man. He's Mukudze to me, man. That's my boy. 
Mm. Hey. Ah, he, 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 you know, he goes out of his way to greet me. He's like, ah, Depi. Uh, wangu. Depi. Yeah. 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 So then probably afterwards, he has, to, he has to speak to his manager, Keen. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. Anyway. Yeah, man. Shout out to Ja Preza, man. Do you know... Ja Praise, I, I'm not a fan of, in general, of Ja Praise. There's some songs I like, but as a general rule, I'm not a fan of his music. But I am such a fan of of the work that he's put in, man. He's, my dude, my dude has, has he's, he's, he's freaking snatched the rug from under these established artists' feet to become Zim's biggest, arguably biggest artist. Come on, man. But in, in on, honestly, like, let, let's be frank and honest. No one was on the throne. Like no one wanted it. Like he was just yeah. looking around like like so you guys like You mind if I uh <laughs> you just like so you mean if I just like go up these stairs and I can just I can just sit there <laughs> Oh shit I want it <laughs> That's how it went. <laughs> oh man. Shout out to Joe Praiser, man. Shout out to him. Um and I and I know some people, even like the most sala uptown people you can think of. Who stands so hard for him? Like it's almost shocking. So mm, hard. Yeah, he, he does have the ladies are so wounding, so wounding. Shout out to you, man. Shout ups, shout ups. Hey, you know what the biggest song in the country is right now? I'm I'm pretty sure because it's like number one on almost all charts across all the radio stations and blah blah blah. Um, his name's Boom Beto. He's a dancehall artist. The name of his song is Mnodone Zamsika. It starts off like Imi mai makanaka. It's heavy tune. Anyway, um, mm. I'm actually while you do that, let me let me bring up the the Zimbo music charts. I don't really know how these guys are tracking because I'm trying know, to get answers. They I say like they I, say they yeah. say they have someone listening to the radio, and I, in my mind I'm like, but how are you paying these people? Like, so you literally have someone just sitting by the radio with a spreadsheet or a piece of paper and a pen, whatever it may be. I'm like, okay, there we go. This no, I was quite impressed because at some point they would be like, this song received this many spins across all the radio stations today. I was like, damn, you guys are counting this? Damn! Shout out to you. Is but, it true? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I really don't know how they try. Th- 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 this, is, this is the song I'm talking about. This is the number one song in the country. <laughs> It's a tune, bro. It's a tune. Anyway, um, so apparently, it obviously was getting high rotation, um, and someone uh, made their way to ZFM to complain bitterly and request the immediate ceasing and desisting of airplay of this terrible song which objectifies women. Okay, the song is called Mnodo Nizamsika. It it implies a woman who's so well endowed that when she walks past, uh, you know, like uh, Msika, she's just just knocking things over. Mm Mm-hmm. So his whole guan is like, Munotinu, Raskeru. Well, you know, like, mm. yeah. Yeah, you tip the scales, basically. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, so. Um, okay. Weirdly enough, I don't see it on this chart. Hmm. It should yeah, be at the top. Carry on. No, no. Accord. Okay, carry on, then I'll, I'll read you the top 10. Okay. Just Anyway, so uh, apparently, bowing to public pressure. It looks like we may have to take it off air. And I'm so confused because I sat down and listened to it to try and see if there's any really offensive lyrics. It's just like Ed Sheeran's Shape of You, fam. Yeah, I'm, in lo- I'm in love with the shape of you. That's really <laughs> what he's singing. Z- anyway. Zimbabweans, Zimbabweans are exhausting with their pseudo-righteousness. You're looking at what? You're looking at the Zimbo Charts thing. According to the Zimbo Charts weekly update, the most played songs on radio this week, the Zimbabwean Top 40, week ending 14 January 2017. Just a a shout out. Why are you looking at 14 January, fam? 4 February. That's the most recent one. Oh, geez. You know, my bad. My bad. That's why you didn't see this. It's a pretty new song, yeah. My bad. It's only been in the charts two weeks. Ah, exactly. Boom, better. Then Shape of You, Ed Sheeran. Uh huh, uh huh. Vunza teens we kilati. What you want? Amara Brown. Gaffa party wingy D. Bachura XQ. Saina tatenda pini pinji C. Simuzango ma DJ Stavo. Wonder if he's paying for those listens too. No stress ten diamond and tower. 
and at number 10, Mofu Makanyanya by Takura. Interesting story. It's not actually Takura. It's a guy called Donny Pound featuring Takura. So I asked mm. Takura, because I don't know who Donny Pound is. He's the one who actually came with the, he's the one who delivered the song. I was like, oh, dope, new music from Takura. So I asked him, I was like, yo, uh, who's Donny Pound? It's like, so, he's the first artist I've signed. I was like, what? You already signing artists, fam? Mm. It's like, yeah, he's not, yet, he's not yet announcing anything or whatever. But basically, this is the first artist he's signed, Donny Pound. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if he's... I don't know if he's, I obviously assume that means he's starting a record label or whatever, but there's no information about it yet. And uh, he's like, yeah, while I still have this hype, I'm trying to, I'm trying to bring up a fanangu with me. I was like, John Fanayo, a brain, a business. I think you're rushing it, but you know what? Only brain the business. Mm-hmm. So shout out to Takora, man. Donny Pound. And it's a really dope song. It's already in the charts. and That's what's up. It's actually That's really dope. Now, now that I think about it. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll love to see how this, uh, this plays out with uh, Ja Praise assigning these artists. And, um, you know. mm, 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 mm. It's, looking, it's looking good out here. It's looking good out here. What else is going on in the Zimbabwean streets, Dan? You know? nah, the streets. <laughs> what, are the, what are the streets? Glad you saying? mentioned the streets. The streets basically don't exist anymore, man. Have you seen the potholes on our roads? Dude, um, weirdly enough, I was taking a walk yesterday. We used to have a tarred road. And I look, I'm looking, I'm like, this road ain't tired no more, fam. This is a dirt road. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, how things are right now, man. It's real right now. Uh, to ah, our countries. It's, it's not so, serious. But, but they will not hesitate to, to find you. They will be, the roadblocks will be there. The toll gates are there. What are, what are they tolling? Plenty. Did you, did you see the, uh, the article in the Herald yesterday? Or the day before yesterday? Anyway, the article basically said... It was uh, Police Commissioner General Augustin Chihuri who was saying, we acknowledge that some of our police officers are corrupt. Really, it's, it's, a, it's a give and take affair. It takes two to tangle. In fact, those were his words. So it turns out that some of the motorists are also corrupt. Are you kidding me? Are you really, really... You're justifying the corruption or excusing the corruption mm. of police by saying, no, members of the public are also corrupt. What? Yeah. Ah. You know, you know, when your head is just right up the booty, just it's right up in the booty there. It's ah. right up there. Like when you can't even just tell whether you are coming or going, it's it's a problem. Um, so, mm, I don't know. I don't know if I keep hearing rumors of uh, class action lawsuits or something I, 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 my fingers are class crossed. action lawsuits have already been taking place there are people that have successfully sued the city of Araria for and other municipalities not for f- floods one and for potholes Funny yeah enough, I heard that as well actually yeah um, someone uh, I'll, I'll tell you off air but there's someone who had a successful case and they got $30,000 because the Mercedes Benz got damaged by potholes uh, I think I know that. Didn't they speak about it on Twitter? I think I know who it is. Yeah, yeah, we know him. He's got that nice house that everyone goes to. <laughs> that dude. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Ah, anyway. Ah, the tales of Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is actually just—it's something else, man. It's like everything is just made deliberately just to just to crush the soul out of you, man. We gotta stay strong, guys. That's right. We must stay resolute. We must fight. Fight must for stay resolution. Right. Fight for right for data bundles. Data must fall. Data must fall. Mm. Um. Anyway, uh, I think we should get XQ on the show. We talk to him. I mean, he's topical mm. information. Yeah. I'd like to get Andy Murizo as well, but uh, he, I, his, his plate might be full at this juncture. Yeah, it, it, it might it be full, but I'm sure junk. we can we can talk. No, and. Do you know, like, I kind of have a relationship with most of these artists. I've literally mm. never said two words to Andy Morizzo in my life, and he probably has no idea who the hell I am, so it's going to be difficult to... Anyway, that's, mm. that's, that, that's, you know, we have to try and make it happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who else do we need to get? Uh, well, we, we have the list, get... Dan. Have you updated the list? Because there's a full list of individuals we need to speak to. Oh, I'll update it. Um, I'll, I'll update it. Um, we need to get, uh, do you know what we need to get soon? Mm. Tammy. 
Who? Tammy, come on, man. She she uh, she released that song that went that was uh, that was a pretty big hit in Dibereke. Dibereke, oh. Soka, Dibere. The she's like I don't know. She's like eighteen or something. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I just, I just, she just like, turned eighteen or something. There. It's a, I just know a lot, a lot of Tammys. I mean, you know, in our community, Dan Tammy is a very <laughs> common name. Yeah, in which com- in which community, so, Phil? So I was trying to figure out which Tammy are you talking about because I know a couple of Tammys. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, she's 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 positioned very well because uh, the person managing her knows uh, knows the industry quite well. Um, but yeah, she's put out really good music. She just released a song featuring Takura and Doba Don, mm. like last week. Um, it's a weird well, fusion, but mm, these are songs you should be posting on the catchy. website, Dan. Why aren't you posting stuff on the website? What's going on, my man? I, I will. I, I shall post them. I, I didn't, plus, I didn't get. The, I got them in CD format, so I don't know if I can upload it. I'll have to find out. Um. And oh, and, oh okay. By the way, she hasn't released it. It's just been released to radio. It's not yet av- available out in the public. But yeah, man, she's doing big things and she seems to have a huge plan. Actually, um, I hear that she's got collaboration, some very big names planned. Mm. So, Major key, major key, major key. I, I believe that's a huge gap that hasn't been exploited in this country. The youthies. Mm. Ah, the you youthies, I mean? they're clamoring for gounding. These youthies, all the 30 year olds. Yeah, all these 30-year-olds, they're vibing to Japraza and Winky D. And but some of the 25-year-olds are loving Killer T. But who are, who are the 16, 17, 18-year-olds listening to, man? Mm, but in Tammy. this country, you are a youthies if you're under 55. True. Mm. True. Well, you're really a youthies if you're under 90. Ah, uh, never mind. Um, mm-hmm. We should get Tammy at some point. Because, you know, it's nice to talk to these youthies who've got plans. And maybe, maybe Phil, our insight can actually, you know... Push yeah, her a little you know, bit in the direction. As, as you know, Dan, Someone, we're trying to mentor these young artists, you know, just give yes. them little pails of wisdom and guidance. Plus, if they do ever blow up, you know, they need to remember remember mm. our names, you know. We've exactly. got to get some of that paper. Uh, that is uh, an- Another person is Shasha. I saw her post on her Instagram a picture with DJ Maporisa talking about big things popping. I was like, yo, okay, cool. Mm. I see you. I see you. Okay, okay, so, okay. Oh, yeah, we have to get Titan as well. Mm-hmm. Did yep. you see what Titan did? What did he do? He released his single, Handirare, but the way you access that single is you buy it in spas nationwide. Mm-hmm. And that really hasn't happened with any like, like, well, our contemporary Zimbabwean artists or any, or any of our contemporaries, I mean. Um yeah, so um, I'd love to. I'd love to hear how he put together that deal and and uh, how well it went. And if he apparently he sold quite a few copies. So his mm. new single. So shout out to Titan. We got to get him. Um, anyone uh, else? Anyone, I'm, I'm anyone just else going through. Like I'm, just, I'm, I'm just going through Shasha's page. Uh, she's hanging with the whole squad. She's got pretty ugly. She's with Cly. Uh, she's with Bonafide Billy. Uh, Witchy. Uh, she, 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 these are good people, man. These are these are my these are these are, these are the boys. These are the squad. It's a squad right here. Yeah. She, she's she's doing things up in these streets, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, but but I'm just gonna talk like designer from now on. <laughs> Did you see that video where like someone was asking questions? And they were, I think it was World Star. Like, what are you gonna do when like you know when when this whole these old sounds that you're making? What are you gonna do when like it's not popping anymore? It's like ah, kick, 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 yeah, kick, kick. It's like no, but what are you gonna do when when yeah, when that ain't a thing no more? I was like, are we sure like he's okay? Like for real, for real, or <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah. like we're, we're shout out to little Uzi Vert. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We're all over here just kind of laughing without thinking I've that ever. maybe someone actually has problems. Mm. That little Uzi verse verse has to be the worst first I've ever heard on on, on bad and bougie. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Why is it even on there? Was he? Was man writing? I know why they put it on there because little Uzi verse has the most followers on SoundCloud, 
Bad and Bougie, they dropped it first on SoundCloud. So it made sense to have him because the moment you have Lil Uzi on it and he reposts it for his followers, it's going to shoot right up to the top. I, I bet they, they, reg- I bet they I kind of regret it now, though, now that they're popping so much. <laughs> yeah. Well, well uh, apparently um, Takeoff is, is about to drop a verse on the song and then they're going to take off Lil Uzi. Which I am very happy with. I, I see what you did there. <laughs> ha! Bars all day. My new single dropping soon. You know how we do. Ah, uh, man. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, I think uh, I think we've, uh, once we reach the stage where Phil makes random sounds on the on the show. I think that's a good time for us to close it up. Um, <laughs> Actually, funny story, funny story, funny story, funny story. This, this is hilarious. So, um, I got a radio studio at the time, and these dudes are recording the trap music. I'm really not feeling it, but you know, I'm just there hanging out. You know, I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm just telling these guys, yeah, this this isn't the wave. Change this, change that. And one artist is recording his ad libs. So, and you can hear him recording. So, literally, like as the conversation is going on, all you hear is. <laughs> 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 Bang, bang. <laughs> I was like, is this what hip hop has come to, my guys? Is this what hip hop has come to? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, that's two broke swimbles, so, man, yeah. for today. Um, a, a pinch and a punch for the first day of the month or whatever, new month things or whatever. Um, Indeed, 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 indeed. Keep it, keep, keep it greasy. Keep it crack. You know what I mean, guys. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Phil Chard at Danny That Guy. Um, obviously, two broke twimbles with the number two. That's two B R O K E T W I M B O S. Bam! I spelled it right. I'm a genius. Mm-hmm. Oh yes. Um, excuse me. Don't forget if you guys need any digital services. That's marketing. That's PR. That's consultancy work. That's content marketing. Um, to get hold of us at donate at two broke twimbles.com or hit us up on Twitter for some professional services. Dan and I are now branching into um, that side. Actually, we've been doing it for quite some time, but we're just trying to formalize things. I mean, we've got this audience. We might as well use it to make some money. You know what I mean? So, yeah, if you are an artist, if you are a content creator and you need a little advice, little tips on how to move your career forward, how to reach your audience without having to pay for views, hit us up. We'll, we'll, we'll help you out. Oh, by the way, uh, I've, uh, I was getting wrapped for this recently. Um, if you're looking for an internet connection in your home, look no further than Zol Fibronics. For as little as $29 a month, you can have fiber to your home. Head on over to zol.co.zw and discover the world of super fast internet at your fingertips. Zol.co.zw. Um, I would recommend, because you're not yet sure about how much your, you know, your, your internet consumption is, just get that $29 package. It's, you won't even feel it in your pocket. You have internet in your house. Installation is free. If you really like it and you find that you're finishing up your gigabytes real quick, you can upgrade to some of the other packages. It's all available for you on the website. Check it out. I'm a happy, happy uh, recipient of Zol Fibronics to my house. Uh, help me keep paying the bill and all of that. Yeah. So my question to you is, this podcast is you and me. True. It's two of us, right? Oh, if there's anything you want to plug, you're welcome to, you know? But, but only one person <laughs> is getting fibronics. I just, like, if you don't see a problem I mean, if then. you want to plug it, I mean, you know, you can plug something. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway, it's all good. I think at this juncture, we can r- wrap it up. Yeah. You know. um, next week, hopefully, we'll get uh, one of these artists who can explain to us what's going on. And uh, yeah, until then, stay tuned. I'm going to post all these new songs I was talking about, all these songs on the website. So check out twobroketwimbos.com. Go to Dino, no stress. I think we should get out of here. All right. It's all good. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And stay safe on these roads. If you are driving straight, you are driving wrong. That's what I'm saying. Oh, do you know who Zig else? Zig Phil, just quickly before we leave, did you hear about the huge fallout between Fungai Nengare and DJ Naida? No. They had put together. What happened? They had a number one song. It was number one on their charts. Maybe it's. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I remember that song. Yeah, yeah. They were shooting the video for it. There was some falling out that happened. They've refused to give me details. They just said, ah, it was just a misunderstanding. And they've demanded that uh, everyone who's playing their song 
from now on only play the one which doesn't have DJ Nida on it. Actually, he went and re-recorded it, cut her out, re-recorded uh, and then reshot the video, cut her out. Uh, she's like, I don't want anything to do with this guy. He's like, I don't want anything to do with this girl. I was like, damn. What? What? And for guys, like one of the most easygoing dudes, you know? Like, yeah, I don't know. It's just like, damn, okay, cool. I would that love is, to hear the full story behind that one. So maybe we could get them as at some point. We've already had Nida, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, we, we have. Fungai. Yeah, we need to get from guy. We need to get from guy. Yo, man, that is that is that is a lituation. My current situation, anyway. lituation. Yeah. Anyway, thought, let's let's get out of here. I gotta eat. I'm hungry. Bye, guys. See you later. Kay. Deuces. Deuces. <laughs>